This screencast is to help you understand the differences in resolution and pixels, how they affect the look of your painting. So here I am in Photoshop and I have five pictures here, one at uh, five pixels per inch, 25 pixels per inch, 75, 150, and 300. And these are, even as I'm flipping through this, I'm thinking you're getting an idea of how those pixels play. This actually says five. I took the text tool and tried to type the number five in here, right? It comes out all pixelated because the pixels are huge. If I were to take the gradient, look at my colors here, and try to fill this with a gradient, it just comes in a bunch of squares. If I come over here to 25 where the squares are small, I'm starting to be able to see something, right? But what's the quality of my gradient now? Oop, I can still see the individual pixels. So the smaller the pixels become, the more legible my letters are and the more realistic my painting. This would be fine for the internet. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute, but 75 is really good for the internet. Let's go to 150. Can you see a difference? Look at this. This is the quality you want to use uh, if you're going to print something at home on your laser printer or just for something for a document like a school report. It's just a really good resolution. It doesn't take up a lot of ink because the um, pixels aren't so small. But can you see a difference between that and 75? How about 300? For high-end printers, you want your artwork to go up on the walls of your home. Maybe you want to show it in a gallery. Um, if you're going to sell it, I would go really higher than this. I actually bought a picture that had 1,500 pixels per inch. Um, but then I've had to pay quite a bit of money for that. For the little things for like pictures for your home, 300 is pretty good. But let's take a look at that quality. Now let's do this one time more time. Let's flip through them. 5, 25. Oops. Cancel. We'll pause there. Did I lose it? Nope. Okay. 25, 75. 150. Well, I can't hardly really see a change. Can't see a change there. But for something a little bit more complex, you might be able to do it. Here's the big one. Down here, when I'm on one pixel, look at the ruler. Two inches, every inch, five pixels, right? The size of this is 300 bytes, right? If I come over here to 25, I get 7.2 kilobytes. Kilobytes is a bigger um, measurement than just a byte. If I come over here to 75, I'm going up to 65K. Look at that again. 25K, 7.32K, 75 PPI, 65.9K. Now watch what happens on 50. Oh, I'm really getting up there in the kilobytes. A hundred of them. Well, a thousand kilobytes equals one megabyte. Look at this. 302 inches just filled in with paint. It's one megabyte. For those of you who might know what a floppy disk is, that would take up one whole floppy disk. That's why we like things like a flash drive that can hold up a gigabyte. You know, that's a thousand megabytes. But all of that plays in how much space you take up on any storage unit. Maybe it's your flash drive, your hard drive, how you're sending it across the internet. It's the amount of kilobytes, megabytes, the smaller the file, the quicker it goes across the internet. So I hope that explains why we're playing around with those numbers. They each have a purpose. Some of them you don't want to use. Some of them you just want to save some file space or you're looking at the device that you're going to use to make your prints. So that's it. Bye-bye.